Hey everyone, here's my second attempt at another cooking video. I figured I have to make dinner, I might as well film while I go. So tonight I'm preparing another one of my family favorites, which absolutely shocked me because this isn't something I would typically think that kids would like, let alone most adults. It is a roasted vegetable with quinoa, kind of a pasta salad. There's no pasta. Quinoa takes the place of the pasta. But it's a really easy recipe to prepare ahead of time if you know. I make this a lot of nights when I know I'm not going to be home during dinner time. I can make it earlier in the day or even the day before, put it in the fridge, and we're good to go. Come dinner time, just pull it out, and it has your proteins, your veggies, everything's in there. You don't need a salad, you don't need anything else. I have no idea where I found this recipe. I know I've been searching for it a while on the internet, and I can't find the exact link, but I do have it printed up, so I will type it up and um, put it in the description box below. So first off, I'm going to film this in steps, because there is it's easy, but there is some prep work. So the first thing you need to do is roast your veggies. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. So what I've done, I actually did this yesterday while I was chopping up vegetables for yesterday's dinner. I went ahead and chopped these up while I had the cutting board out. And all you need is one medium zucchini, and I cheated. I used a zucchini, and then I added a summer squash, a yellow, basically a yellow zucchini. Um, one cup of grape tomatoes. I don't measure it. You know, there's the little tomatoes like this. I don't measure it. I just take the one container of grape tomatoes and cut it in half or sometimes in quarters. Oh, those are good. And um, that's what I use. And then I added a whole lot of extra vegetables that are not in the recipe, but I'll list what I put in here. So I have the green, I have the zucchini, I have the summer squash, I have the container of uh, grape tomatoes, I have one red onion chopped up, and oh, one yellow bell pepper. I just like a variety of colors, so I think that it looks really pretty all together. So once you have everything chopped up, I do a rough chop and make everything about bite size, so when you're eating it with a fork, it fits on your fork. All you need is a little bit of olive oil. It says a teaspoon. This is the part I don't measure. I find that with cooking, the less measuring I do, the better the food tastes. So I just drizzle some olive oil all over it, just like that. And then it just calls for a little salt and pepper. And I want to show you these. These are the McCormick Black Peppercorn Grinders. Hang on. These are awesome. You get these at the grocery store. Salt and pepper. The grinder's already included. So you just take the cap off and start grinding. So let's get to it. Okay, so I just do a few quick grinds over the whole top. And I will add that I've already preheated my oven to 425, and I've lined a cookie sheet with the best invention since press and seal. It is Reynolds non-stick aluminum foil. One side's non-stick, one side's regular. Best thing I have ever bought for my daily kitchen use. Anyway, if you like a lot more, I don't, I wouldn't recommend adding a lot more salt, but you can if you want to. A little bit of pepper, as much or as little as you like. And then you just give it a quick stir to make sure everything's kind of coated. What I actually do is, once I get this on the cookie sheet, I'll drizzle a little more olive oil. So let's go ahead and do that. I've kind of jumbled them all up. And then we're going to spread them evenly. I've added more than the usual amount. I really like a lot of veggies in this time of year. Just everything is in season and it's hard to just limit yourself to a handful. So I guess this is really my recipe now since I took it and I've added some things and removed some things and made it all mine. So now just to make sure they're all juicy and yummy, I just do a quick drizzle. It's my belief that you can never have too much olive oil. I think it was Italian in another life. And then I'll add a little more pepper. Anyway, this is going to go into the oven at 425, between 10 and 15 minutes. I usually go closer to 15, sort of when they're getting a little, they shrink down in size. I think it says, yeah, soft and lightly brown. I always go a little longer. I just like them cooked that way. If you prefer yours a little crisper, go on the 10 minute side. So while those are in the oven, I'm also going to prepare the second part, the main part, which is the quinoa. And I just use this brand because it's, it's what's at my grocery store. It's called the Ancient Harvest Gluten-Free Quinoa. If you're not familiar with quinoa, it's pretty cool. It's gluten-free if that's a problem for you. There's that choo-choo train. And it has protein in it. Let's see how much protein. Six grams of protein in a serving, which is pretty good. So 
even though kind of technically it's a carb, the, it has fiber, it has protein, it's pretty much your perfect protein in here. So what I do is I just follow the directions. It calls for two cups, I believe, of cooked quinoa, which means it's, you cook it like rice. So it's one cup of quinoa, and I add double the amount of water, I believe. Let's see. Where are the, oh yes, one cup to two cups of liquid. But instead of using water, here is my secret, is why it tastes so good. I don't use chicken broth, I use chicken stock. I get the unsalted chicken stock, which is delicious. And I put two cups of this in a saucepan and boil one cup of this. I just follow the package directions. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, get this stuff cooked, and I'll come back when everything's ready to be assembled. Okay, now for the fun part. I've cooked my quinoa and roasted my veggies and combined them all in this bowl over here. There they are, looking pretty and colorful. But there's absolutely really no flavor in this. This is where the dressing comes in. So I bought this Vitamix to make smoothies and juices. Doesn't happen as much as I like, but it's great for making vinaigrettes. So what you need for this is, I'm gonna tell you what I use and not the recipe. So I basically double what the recipe calls for and eliminate a couple. So I usually use the juice of three limes, and I've got this at Walmart. It is the best thing. It's just a lemon juicer. It's so easy. So I don't even really measure it. I just squeeze in these three. So I have my lime juice, and then you basically want to just add an equal amount of olive oil. It also calls for garlic clove, and I've been using my little frozen guys here. Love these. Pop two in, and half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. This is the part I don't double up on, so let's just add in the salt. I'm just using basic kosher salt. No, I do not keep kosher, but I like using kosher salt. I get asked that a lot. Kosher salt is just preferable for most, over just regular table salt. And then half a teaspoon of sugar. There we go. Now we just pop that on the Vitamix. And I will spare you the noise. I will be right back. So you just pour your vinaigrette all over. I didn't add all of it. I want to just kind of make sure I didn't overdo it. The quinoa can be very absorbent. So if you think you've added too much, you'd be surprised. And this is best served either cold or at room temperature. Um, so you can let it sit for a little bit, let the flavors really sit. The longer it kind of is, is prepared ahead of time, the better it actually tastes. Okay, get some with some tomatoes and everything. It's really good. The vegetables still have a little bit of crunch to them, so it's not like eating a soggy mess. But there's one more ingredient that I'm going to add um, that I think just kind of jazzes it up, and that's about a cup of excuse me, that's about a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. It just adds a little bit of calcium, and and it's on the recipe, and it just gives it a little bit extra something. So again, I'm not a big fan of measuring. I just have some finely grated cheddar and with clean hands. Just kind of sprinkle like two big handfuls. Can you ever have too much cheese? I don't think so. And you just mix all that up. Now if you have some meat lovers in your family who insist that it's not a meal with some kind of animal protein, which occasionally happens even in my house, um, I will just grill some chicken breast, either serve it up on the side for those picky eaters that don't want it mixed up in the quinoa, or if I know everybody's going to be eating this, then I'll chop it up and toss it in with the veggies in the quinoa. So here you have it, a very colorful, very healthy, easy to make, to prepare ahead, roasted veggie quinoa dish. Hope you like it. Let me know if you try it and what your family thinks about it. I have to say that our next door neighbor, my son's best friend, was over for dinner the other night. He is a very picky eater and I put this in front of him. He cleared his plate and asked his mom to get the recipe. So if you have some picky eaters, just don't tell them what's in it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. But honestly, really truly the best thing is the people
people that I've met either in real life or virtually through this and um, just the connections I've made with other women 